This is a brief tutorial presented by Lisa Johnson for tips for active reading that can be helpful especially for online learners, but really any learner in any context. So first, a few active reading strategies. One of the best things you can do to be an active reader is to prepare for the reading that you will undertake. You can look at the title, the introduction, or abstract of a writing, and you can ask yourself, what do you already know about these topics before you begin to read? Another really good strategy based on preparing for reading is to consider which activities are associated with the reading in your assigned classwork. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to organize for preparing reading in a moment. Second, you can identify and define unfamiliar terminology. Stopping to do that while you're reading makes you a more active participant in the knowledge that you're receiving from the text or video or whatever it is that you're reading or studying at that particular moment. Stopping yourself and identifying and defining terminology that's unfamiliar to you, including concepts, can be helpful. Next, you'll want to consider the thesis or main idea of the reading. Typically in text, Every paragraph is going to have a thesis or main idea stated, and really the whole writing itself should as well. In a textbook, these are often organized into prefaces for a unit or the entire book or perhaps a chapter. And if you're reading a research article, be sure and consider the research questions and the conclusions drawn from the study that you're reading. That would be helpful in addition to looking at the abstract for the article as well. Next, make sure you stop at pause and at points of interest. It's recommended that you avoid highlighting, whether you do that online or in a, with a physical highlighter, and instead force yourself to write summaries about the thoughts you're having instead. Anytime you have the urge to highlight or underline or star something or make some sort of notation on a text, don't do that. Instead, summarize what you're thinking. And also, if applicable, make notes related to the associated course activities. And we'll talk a little bit more about ways to do that with templates in a moment. Next, you can always rewrite the headings as questions. In any text that you have that you're reading, you'll often find headings that are used to organize the text. If you write those headings as questions to yourself, then that will help you be a more engaged reader and more active in your reading overall. And next, it's smart to visually organize content as you're studying it. You can use outlines to do this that are purely textual, or you can use visual organizers such as concept maps. Thinking of the text itself more closely, focusing in on the paragraph, it's a good idea to focus on what the paragraph says and then what it does. So for example, look at the topics, supporting points and resources, and the transitions or conclusion statements in every paragraph. The first sentence in a good paragraph typically has the topic stated very clearly. The following sentences typically have supporting points and will offer resources such as quotes, paraphrases, or summaries. And then each paragraph, if well written, will typically have a transition statement letting you know what's coming up next in the text or concluding some point. You also want to consider what the reading says after each paragraph. That's focusing on what it says. Tell yourself in your mind or speak aloud or perhaps share with someone what it is you think the paragraph you just read really means. This will help you digest how well you are uh, comprehending the material that you're reading. And then next, consider what the purpose of the paragraph is within the context of the writing. So that after each paragraph, force yourself to pause essentially and ask what did that paragraph just do in the context of the entire work that you're reading. Next, it's recommended that you summarize for active reading. You can capture essential ideas in writing or visual format, but the point is to take things off the page and put them into your own words in some format. You can even write original examples based on your experiences if possible. That will help you internalize the learning even further. And finally, discuss for transfer, retention, and clarity. There is simply no better way to learn than to teach or share what you're learning about with others. This could be with your children, a roommate, a spouse, anyone that's willing to listen to what you're learning about, even a colleague or peer. Take a chance and share what you're learning. Don't be afraid to look like you're a novice, because fact is, if you're learning something new, you are a novice learner, and the only way to become expert is to share what you know. Next, 
By explaining what you're learning to others, this helps you to transfer what you're learning into longer-term memory, which can aid in retention. So again, by sharing with others, you will learn not only what you know, but it will also reveal to you areas of confusion and opportunities for further study. So those are some quick tips for active reading. Now let's take a look at an example. On the left side of the screen, you'll see an excerpt from an article by Shankelford and Maxwell written in 2012 titled The Sense of Graduate or Community in Graduate Online Education, Contribution of Learner-to-Learner -learner Interaction, and this was published in the International Review of Research in Open and Distance Learning. The two paragraphs presented on the screen you may want to pause and read, but the essential idea here is to look over on the top right, where I've created a shaded box, where I've turned the heading into a question. The heading for this section of the article is Theoretical Framework, so I've asked myself the question, what is the theoretical framework? Next, I've jotted some notes down about concepts or key terms that I'm seeing just in these two paragraphs from that section. And then at the bottom of the screen, you'll see an image. I used the word art function in PowerPoint to create that. Essentially, it's just a process organizer, and it was a way for me to summarize very quickly for you as an example of a way you can use an image to summarize what you're learning. And you can see there we have three components of social constructivist learning that are related in the brief excerpt from this page. So this is just one example of a way to read actively, and a very brief example, mind you. Now the next slide here is actually a visual organizer using a program called Cogglet. C-O-G-G-L-E period I-T is the web address. And what I did was create a brief, essentially, map or concept map of an organization for visual appeal to me of what I had just summarized on the previous slide. And here you can see I have theoretical framework with a branch off of it, noting that the theoretical framework in this article was social constructivism, and that Vygotsky was a leading uh, author that was cited. And then I have several components of social constructivism listed and subcomponents of one of those, multifaceted engagement. And this is just a way to organize what you're learning. It does take time to read actively, but the more actively you read, not only the better will you do in your coursework and be more prepared to do well, but you'll also, again, internalize and be able to transfer that learning to longer-term memory more easily. The more you fiddle with the knowledge, in other words, the more it becomes real and you own it. So next, let's look at some active reading technology considerations. As a learner, especially graduate learners that I work with most often, I can't recommend any more than I already do probably that you go ahead and invest in the full Adobe PDF program. You can use an educational discount to get the full program. The program will allow you to save any web page and also take any existing PDF and add underlining and commenting in line within the document. Since a lot of the research that you might do will be from the library, and the articles that you'll read will often be in a portable document format or PDF format, having the full program from Adobe really simplifies use of PDFs. And again, you can turn any Word document and any web page into a PDF with that full program and use those editing and other notation options from the program. It really helps me as a researcher and studying a new knowledge, and so I highly recommend it for students. Take advantage of the educational discount if you can. You also might want to consider using templates to organize your study and thinking. I recommend Google Documents as a place to do that because you can access it anywhere with an internet connection and you can keep your flow going. If you have an idea about something you read, you can jump onto your Google Doc and make notes. But really any document will work and the idea of using templates is really about setting up your study, organizing it, so that if you know you have an assignment for class or you have a discussion perhaps or any activity, you can set up a document to organize your thoughts around that activity in relation to what you're reading. So my advanced organizing recommendation here is essentially to be an active reader, you're going to need certain tools to help you do that, especially electronically. So having templates if in lieu of using the full Adobe program or both together is a good idea. And then finally, I do recommend the Cogglet program. As you just saw the example in the previous slide, it helps you to map out things in a visual way. That might not appeal to everyone. For some, just using a straight text outline will be good enough. 
the point is get your thoughts off the page and out of your head and into the another format that you can refer to again i use the word the expression fiddling with your knowledge and it really is about playing with it putting it in your head in multiple different avenues helping you be more active as you learn which will help with retention and help with transfer there you have it some brief tips for active reading i hope you found these useful